In this class we'll be concerned with the learning curve theory. Theodore Paul Wright developed the learning curve theory. Wright's theory was developed from his research of the aircraft industry and labour productivity where he implied that it is possible to predict labour time when producing planes in the future. So it was a detailed study of the aircraft industry and he tried to work out if it's possible to predict the production time for aircraft in the future. So looking at their experiences, current experiences of manufacturing aircraft and perhaps past experiences and an element of learning by doing. According to Wright it would therefore be possible to uh, move into the future in the sense of being able to predict production times in the future based on current experience. Wright suggested that the time it takes to produce a product reduces by the quantity produced. Now if, if we can just stop with that sentence for a moment in a sense this is not revolutionary, this is not completely radical thinking. Adam Smith in The Wealth of Nations in 1776 in, in his book The Wealth of Nations, Smith uh, talked about the division of labour and the productivity gains that were to be had from dividing work up into small units, uh, small tasks and then operators performing small tasks would learn by doing. They would gain a skill in doing that particular task and they would become more adept at producing the product. So that output per worker would increase dramatically by dividing the work process up into small tasks and allocating it to, to different workers. Well what Wright's suggesting here is that uh, the product cost and the, the time it takes to produce a product should diminish with the quantity produced. So there is in a sense a learning by doing aspect to this one as well. It's very similar to what Smith was suggesting way back in 1776 in The Wealth of Nations. Um, to move on from, from that particular sentence, and this is, it goes on to say, this is an act of repetition where individuals or groups become good at a task if they keep producing the same product using the same procedure over a certain period of time. <clears throat> so there is learning by doing. There is, uh, the workers are gaining experience of how to do the task, they're becoming more efficient at producing the task, they're more familiar with the task, and they, they become more adept, as I said earlier, at doing the task. So productivity should improve. They are, they're learning from their experience. The learning curve is a natural human process. We learn from errors. We search for techniques and technologies that help us become more efficient. This is what we've done since we lived in caves. We, we're we always looking out for better ways of living, better ways of, of acquiring food and shelter and we've done it really from very primitive times right up to now. We're still looking for better ways to perform tasks, more efficient ways of living, more efficient ways of of working. So it's not a new thing to the human condition. This This is something that we do and we seem to do automatically. And when we make mistakes, we learn from the mistake. We, we understand what we've done wrong, why the mistake occurred. And the next time we try to avoid it because we know it'll, the error will arise again. So what's the point? We may as well do it correctly. So we learn from our experiences. All the time we're learning. We're learning by doing. The learning curve is not a means of reducing costs but allows us to become more efficient in the future. So it doesn't reduce current costs but 
it allows us to become more efficient in the future and thereby we become uh, more more skillful more productive in the future and that will have an impact on costs so it's when we move into the future that we benefit from our current learning but our current learning has benefited from our previous learning going right the way back so the more we perform a task the more skilled we become at performing it in the future and the learning curve would look something like this the number of repetitions for a given task the more we do it then the time taken per repetition well you can see the time taken per <coughs> excuse me the time taken per repetition fall um, folds as we do more and more repetitions but you'll see that the curve tends to flatten out over towards the right hand side and the reason is it'll still take us some time to perform the task even though we become super efficient it'll still take time and there will be a point at which there are no more efficiencies to be had we have become as efficient as is possible at which point costs will will be fixed so we can imagine the time to produce the the task falling because we learn from our errors we learn from doing we we gain the experience of working at so the time is falling we're becoming more productive but it starts to flatten out as the number of repetitions increases now the advantages and disadvantages of the learning curve well first start the advantages the model is useful in distinguishing between dedicated uh, employees and ones that show a lack of interest in the task being carried out um, quite simply when people are set tasks and one person starts to become more and more efficient at producing the task they're learning by doing they're paying attention they're learning from the mistakes they're avoiding the mistakes in the future they're finding more productive ways of carrying out the task in other words that person is engaged in the task that person is is dedicated that person is interested that person wants to succeed a person who who's not making progress who's still taking the same time to produce the items who's who's making the same mistakes over and over is not one who's paying attention or or dedicated to trying to improve so this is a way in which employees can be in a sense graded graded for their interest they're able to look at the employees and say which ones are making mistakes which ones have become more efficient which ones have not and in this way there's an insight into the employee motivation the employee dedication <clears throat> it's a process of filtering out the the weaker candidates so weaker workers can be identified and therefore less time wastage the, the worker who is not making progress who is not becoming more skilled at doing the job not becoming more efficient that worker could be moved off to do some other task perhaps there's also a consideration of employee level of satisfaction the more challenging a task the higher the level of satisfaction as humans we like a challenge we like to have a task that challenges us and we have to think about it and we have to figure out how to do it and when we've done a good job we're rewarded by praise the the manager thanks us and and says a job well done we, we like this this is part of the human condition so we like challenging tasks but they can't be so challenging that we can't do them they have to be they have to be possible we have to be able to complete the task but challenging nonetheless when there's a, a constant repetition of a dip, difficult task there is also a greater sense of satisfaction and accomplishment when the task is is difficult but we've encountered the task many times and we've we've learned from our mistakes and we've 
we, we know how to get organized. It's a complex task, but now we're able to perform it fast, efficiently, productively. Uh, this, this could actually lead to status within the, the working environment. People admire the dexterity in which we go about the task. It's a complex task, but we're able to do it fast and it works. It, it's good quality. So we like to be able to, in a sense, show off, show off what we've achieved. The disadvantages. Well, there's also a cost factor to take into account. The more repetition activities that take place, the more cost is incurred to the organizations. Um, repetition means breaking the task up into many single tasks but then there is the the movement along the line there is the there is the organization of the different tasks there is the um, the stock required and in a sense the logistics the movement along the line and having all of the components available uh, throughout and if there's a breakdown in the line if different workers are working on different parts of the task, the task is passed from one worker to the next and they're working on something that they've built up a skill on but if that line breaks for whatever reason then the whole production process breaks down, the whole line breaks down so if one of the workers um, runs runs out of raw materials or out of particular components and, and can't finish his or her task then the workers further along the line who are waiting for the item to be passed to them for them to work on it they're going to be um, to, to stand still they have nothing to work on so there are risks involved in this process and there are costs difficult tasks are more likely to cause frustration Learning new tasks requires time and careful attention. However, mistakes are common. These have an adverse effect on organization as they have to incur the, the costs. So difficult tasks can lead to frustration. Difficult tasks can lead to employees getting annoyed with the task. They, they find it difficult to put it all together or it, it, it might require particular dexterity and it may take time to develop that and when when new tasks are introduced it takes time to learn those it takes time for the employees to focus and completely assimilate what is required within that task and with complicated tasks or difficult tasks or with new tasks mistakes can happen and that can add to the frustration and the annoyance of the employee and it will also have of course a bad effect on the organization since it will increase the costs the learning curve theory is a useful guide for organizations um, they can use the theory to predict retention rate and task efficiency um, we expect workers to become more efficient over time they become more skilled at performing the task they become more efficient they, 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 in the sense that the time they spend on on the task is reduced they're able to perform more tasks in a given time period but we have to take into account other issues if the employee is doing the same task repetitively day in day out they may become bored it may be seen as dehumanizing so we need job enlargement as well to keep us interested not just performing one task because we're efficient at producing that task producing the one task over and over that is is not seen as uh, as conducive to good a good working life The theory can be used in all organizations and uh, relevant training courses. 
uh, it's possible for us to acquire skills by performing the, uh, a particular task over and over so we acquire a particular skill uh, that's how we we learned uh, at our first school we learned to write by repetitively making letters using a pen and paper and and writing it down over and over and when we'd mastered it we were praised by the teacher so we we had a reward but as I said if if we are performing the same task day in day out having acquired the skill to do to complete the task uh, it can become very boring we as individuals we receive new information we learn from errors and we rectify the errors and therefore this helps us to to be better to be better at the task so as individuals this is part of the human condition we do look for new information we look for new ways of working we look for new ideas we constantly reflect on what we're doing and and what's what we were confronted with and we try to improve our work by reflection and by by thinking and we learn from our mistakes uh, if we're careful we understand what happened why uh, the outcome was was not good so the next time we approach the same task we make alterations to avoid the errors so this introduces us to the concept of the learning curve and that's all I'm going to do in this session so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching